upon a lofty throne I saw a man seated, whom a host of angels adore, singing in unison. Behold him, the name of whose empire is eternal. This holy mass is being offered for uh, Paula Hutchison. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting love. Amen. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those who are you with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. Look, they said to him, you are old, and your sons do not follow your ways. So give us a king to rule over us, like the other nations. It displeased Samuel that they should say, let us have a king to rule us. So he prayed to the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Obey the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for it is not you they have rejected, they have rejected me from ruling over them. All that the Lord had said Samuel repeated to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the rights of the king who is to reign over you. He will take your sons and assign them to his chariotry and cavalry, and they will run in front of his chariot. He will use them as leaders of a thousand and leaders of fifty. He will make them plough his ploughland and harvest his harvest, and make his weapons of war and the gear for his chariots. He will also take your daughters as perfumers, cooks, and bakers. He will take the best of your fields, of your vineyards and olive groves, and give them to his officials. He will tithe your crops and vineyards to provide for his eunuchs and his officials. He will take the best of your manservants and maidservants, of your cattle and your donkeys, and make them work for him. He will tithe your flocks, and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out on account of the king you have chosen for yourself, but on that day God will not answer you. The people refused to listen to the words of Samuel. They said, No, we want a king, so that we, in our turn, can be like the other nations. Our king shall rule us and be our leader and fight our battles. Samuel listened to all that the people had to say and repeated it in the ears of the Lord. The Lord then said to Samuel, Obey their voice and give them a king. The Word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Happy the people who acclaim such a king, 
who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who find their joy every day in your name, who make your justice the source of their bliss. I will For it is you, O Lord, who are the glory of their strength. It is by your favour that our might is exalted. For our ruler is in the keeping of the Lord, our King in the keeping of the Holy One of Israel. I will sing forever of your love. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to to Mark. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, word went round that he was back, and so many people collected there that there was no room left even in front of the door. He was preaching the word to them when some people came bringing him a paralytic carried by four men, but as the crowd made it impossible to get the man to him, they stripped the roof over the place where Jesus was, and when they had made an opening, they lowered the stretcher on which the paralytic lay. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, My child, your sins are forgiven. Now some scribes were sitting there, and they thought to themselves, How can this man talk like this? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God? Jesus, inwardly aware that this was what they were thinking of, said to them, Why do you have these thoughts in your hearts? Which of these is easier? To say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, pick up your stretcher, and walk. But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I order you, Get up, pick up your stretcher, and go off home. And the man got up, picked up his stretcher at once, and walked out in front of everyone, so that they were all astounded and praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. If we reflect on this morning's Gospel, beginning of the second chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, the healing of the paralytic, the lowering of the stretcher, the pallet through the roof. And the important point initially is to recognize the faith of those who were carrying the paralyzed man. They came but realized that they could not enter the house because of the crowds. Jesus responds as they lower the man through the roof, having taken off the tiles or covering, that they have this faith. Seeing their faith, Jesus speaks to the paralytic. But he does not say initially, get up, walk, you are healed. He says, my child, <coughs> your sins are forgiven. Now he, was, he said that really for two reasons. <laughs> Firstly, of course, because he knew what the scribes would say, he is blaspheming, <coughs> and he wished to give evidence of the power and authority of the Son of Man. But also, because there is a relationship between physical sickness and sin. But we have to be very careful. <coughs> it does not mean to say that everybody who is physically sick 
is sick because of their sins. No, what it means is that all of us, sick or healthy, are sinners. Yes, there are some sins which may well <coughs> lead directly to physical illness. But for the most part, it is not a causal relationship. So if somebody is sick, somebody is ill, we don't say they are sick or ill because they're such a great sinner. We say they are a sinner just as the healthy are sinners. And that's the point that Jesus is making and the power of forgiveness. But to prove to his detractors, in this case the scribes, that he has the full power of God, he then heals the man physically. Get up, <coughs> pick up your stretcher, and go home. And the response of the crowds is to be astounded, astonished, and to praise God. <coughs> we have never seen anything like this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The bread. Blessed be the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this one. Through the divine and of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Lord God, our spiritual sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> may your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in your goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions, adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, 
Holy Lord, God of hosts. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as vows, with the blessed apostles, St. Michael, the Archangel, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly, says the Lord. The act of spiritual communion, I, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those who renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in. Saving guest, Lord of my sin.